Hello, I'm Nina Hossain. The Met's been accused of misusing Twitter following a complaint from a victim of crime. She discovered one local area account in Lambeth was following dozens of celebrities, comedy shows and high-end fashion retailers. It's raised questions about the effectiveness of how the force uses social media to help fight crime. Our senior correspondent, Ron K. Phillips, reports. New media, there is still a lot to learn. Ron K. Phillips, ITV News. Detectives are investigating the murder of a man at a fairground in West London. Police were called to reports of a fight last night in Southall Park. The 20-year-old victim was found nearby with head injuries. Two others were injured and six people have been arrested. One of the biggest names on the streets of London, the estate agent Foxtons, has announced plans to float on the stock market. There are predictions that a share issue could value the agency at nearly half a billion pounds. Foxtons has around 40 branches in London and Surrey. I'm joined now by the property expert, Joe Eccles, who's here to explain what it all means. What does it all mean in terms of what does it mean about the London housing market at the moment? Well, it has. And in terms of Foxons, it hasn't always been a straightforward ride for them. Mm. So how have they managed to really turn things around to be in this position where they can join those other estate agents to, to try and make this massive? Amount? Do strategic moves, for example. Um, their revenue is now 50%, a pretty much 50% 50 50 split between sales and lettings. Mm whereas predominantly it was much more sales focused and so we have seen them become much more diversified which I think has really helped them come back. And a lot of the properties that they sell are going to wealthy foreign people who, mm. who have cash to, to buy straight away. Yeah. How does that impact on ordinary Londoners who are just trying to, to start to get on the property ladder? It, it's incredibly hard. Um, you know, affordability just simply isn't there and that's why the government is stepping in with, with schemes such as the help to buy scheme. Mm. Um, whether the government should be intervening in the first place and particularly um, you know, helping people to buy already inflated prices and I think the help to buy scheme particularly Particular, it's it's open to anyone buying extremely high mm. and yes as you say that the average Londoner just simply can't afford to get onto the ladder all right we'll have to leave it on that negative note there Joe Eccles thank you for coming in thank you London's housing market might be fueling a rising confidence in parts of the capital but one area tops a very different league table the place most worried about debt Commuters had to be led to safety when part of the train they were travelling on this morning caught fire. Passengers were evacuated. A year ago this week, the Paralympics arrived in London. Much like the Olympics, we had no idea what to expect. But after such a special Games, could they match the magic, the excitement and the passion? Well, they did. But a year on, has that feel-good factor made a difference for those who face a daily struggle to get around the city? Luke Hanrahan investigates. Well, I'm delighted to say for more on this, I'm joined now by Tim Hollingsworth. Thank you very much for coming in. A year on, are you disappointed that although at the time, a year ago this week, the Paralympics really did transform attitudes in a very positive way, but people are still, on a daily basis, just struggling to get in. What are we talking about now? What are the issues that we're facing? And you know, if this is a journey, we're by no means at the summit. We're still probably in the foothills. For the Paralympics to be a shop window for the issues surrounding Paralympians and you know people mm. with disabilities, and it certainly was. But it's hard to capitalise on that in terms of putting pressure on people that are involved in when you're running the, the essay. Wrong. Because nobody is suggesting that everything is perfect. You actually saw some change already in place there. I think the government, as Sophie said again in her, in her interview, is doing a lot more. On Pressing to learn, isn't it, about Crossrail, a, a whole new project that mm. isn't going to be accessible. I think all. that's one really good example of where actually pressure can be put on. I think we saw last year can inspire a really... I read an article today that so you'd been interviewed two years ago where you, you were talking about there was going to be a push to promote tickets. The idea, no. did we, until a year ago, that it was going to be such a magical event, that it was going to create such excitement arguably as much, if not more so, than the Olympics. You must be... The Games was one day. Yep. It was as much. We've got another day coming up on, on 7th of September. Very briefly, just over a 1,000 days till Rio. Do oh. you think Rio Paralympics <laughs> can be anywhere close? 16. OK, Tim Hollingsworth, thank you. Let's bring you the latest now in the Gareth Bale saga. The ITV News continues with the national and international stories at 6.30. Here's a look at what's happening with Mary Nightingale. It's weather time now and Martin's here. It's a pretty misty start to the morning. But before we, we talk about that strange weather, because eventually the sun did break through, you've been learning about strange weather going back 
not this year or 10 years, 2,000 years. The note speaker at the Royal Ge Geographical Survey has been talking about these... What sort of events is he talking about? Well, loads of interesting things, really. So the first um, recorded flood of the Thames was back in 7 AD. Have you got pictures for me? No. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then in 69 AD, um, the whole... It would have just blown the fire out to where there was no inhabitants completely. And they used to have the, uh, it was called the Frost Fair, so you'd have wagons, horses, market stalls, the whole lot mm. uh, on the Thames. So what it proves is there were extremes of weather back then, and also everyone loves to talk about the weather, as they do now, <laughs> and complain about it. Finally tonight, while many teenagers are still enjoying their summer holidays, one group from London are working hard thousands of miles away. It's part of a charity project in a remote part of India aimed at improving the lives of young people. It's only possible because of the generosity of passengers at Heathrow and Gatwick. To explain all, here's Mike Pearce. And that is all from the London team for now. We're back with the latest after ITV News at 10. Stay with ITV for the national and international news with Mary Nightingale and Alistair Stewart. <laughs>